Good morning, everyone. Shalom and uh, welcome to the class on the Kingdom of God. Um, we'll continue studying Chapter 7 um, this morning, uh, just looking at the last parable that we were to study, which is uh, given in our uh, publication, and then we'll move on to Chapter 8. So before we look at Luke Chapter 19, verses 11 to 27, um, the parable that presents to us about stewardship and future authority. Uh, we'll just uh, pause for a word of prayer. So can any one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Nobody wants to pray? Hello? Yes, Rin, go ahead. I can hear you. Thank you, Jesus, for this uh, wonderful morning, for this new day. Lord, you've blessed us with. We thank you, Jesus, so much for that. And Lord, as we are going to study today about your kingdom, I pray that um, our minds and our hearts would be open and that we'll be able to understand and um, learn something new today, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for just helping Pastor Selena to teach us well and that um, we would all have a good time together. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rin. Uh, so last week we were studying uh, the parables um, concerning the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and we looked at quite a number of parables uh, the last parable that we were studying was in Luke chapter 19, verses 11 to 27, where we see that a certain nobleman, you know, went uh, into a far off country to receive for himself a kingdom, and he was going to return. And he called 10 of his servants and gave uh, them 10 minas, and he asked them to do business uh, till he comes back. Okay. So, uh, here in this parable, we see that uh, uh, Jesus is that is referred to as the noble man, and uh, he has um, gone back to the Father, and he is going to come back um, after he receives a kingdom, and he will return, and he is going to ask us how we were good stewards of um, what he has entrusted. Uh, to us. So this parable talks about present stewardship and also about future uh, authority. So we see here in this parable that uh, Jesus says that we need to get into the world and we need to do business uh, till he comes back, which means we need to engage in the world um, uh, till he comes back. Uh, Jesus wants to find out what his um, uh, people have done with, you know, how successful they were in engaging the world. He just wants to find out uh, what his servants did, which means, you know, were they successful in engaging the world? How much did they multiply what he has uh, given to us? How much did uh, we increase in our influence, increase in our impact, um, increase in the way that we are reaching out to this uh, in this world? And how much did we gain by uh, trading? So this is not just a nice story that he was telling uh, or a nice parable that he was telling the people, but this parable is about the kingdom of God. So this is uh, what Jesus wants his kingdom to be like. It's not just what he wants his kingdom to be like. This is how his kingdom is. And this is what Jesus expects of um, you and me. Uh, but we can say, you know, um, uh, you know, we can say, Jesus, you know, we thought you're already rich. You own the entire world. All the riches of the world belongs to you. You know, uh, then why are you asking me to, you know, make something for you? Or why are you asking me to engage in this world and trade and do business uh, and make something for you? So it's it, we don't see it in that sense, but, you know, um, what he wants to see in us is he wants to see in us stewardship. Okay, so um, and our stewardship is um, is actually measured by how much we gain by 
trading, which means what did we do with the talents that he has placed in um, us? Uh, what did we do with the time that he has uh, given us? What did we do with the opportunities that he uh, he has uh, given us? What did he uh, What did we do with the uh, the people, the contacts? Um, what did we do with the abilities that he has uh, given us? You know. Um, uh, what do we do with our uh, 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 contacts, uh, the people that he's placed in our life? What did we do with the abilities, uh, you know, or whether it's the uh, intellectual knowledge that he's uh, given to us, you know, uh, whatever it is, you know, what have we uh, done uh, with what he has entrusted to us? So he wants us to be good stewards of um, the the talents, the time, the people, the contacts, the opportunities, the gifts, the abilities um, that he has entrusted to us, that he has given to us, and he is looking uh, for us to be good stewards. Um, and how do we know that we are good stewards is, uh, is measured by how much we gain by using what he has entrusted to us, okay? Uh, another very interesting thing that we can uh, learn from this um, uh, parable is not just about uh, stewardship, but also about uh, future um, kingdom authority. Um, you know, this parable uh, which Jesus uh, teaches us, he says that, you know, those who are profitable by trading, which means those of us who are good stewards of what he has entrusted to us, those who have used all of their gifts and their abilities and the opportunities that he's given to us uh, to enhance his kingdom, to build his kingdom, to further his kingdom, you know, uh, we will receive a reward. So, uh, you know, he will reward each one of us with authority over uh, the cities. If you look at this parable, you know, um, he's, he, he calls, when he comes back, he calls back his servants and uh, the first one said, Master, your mina has earned 10 minas. And he said to him, well done, good servant, because you were faithful in very little, have authorities over 10 cities. And the second one came and said he earned five more. And um, what does the nobleman say? You know, uh, likewise, he said to him, you also will be over uh, five cities, which means you will have authority over five cities. So, you know, um, the reward that we will receive is, you know, that we would be given authority over cities, uh, which will be proportionate to the stewardship uh, that we have lived in this world or we have exercised in this world. So how, how good stewards we have been in proportion to that, we will be given authorities over uh, cities. And we know that, you know, when Jesus comes again, he is going to uh, literally establish um, uh, uh, the, uh, the future kingdom here on earth. And uh, the believers who are called as saints uh, will rule the world and, um, you know, will administer or govern the nations in the literal kingdom that uh, Jesus is uh, going to establish. We're now talking basically about the spiritual kingdom. All that we've been looking so far and studying about the kingdom of God is uh, the whole spiritual uh, dimension of the kingdom of God. But there is going to be uh, in the future you know, uh, the literal future kingdom that Jesus is going to come and establish. And in that, you know, proportionate to how good stewards we have been in this world, uh, what we have done with what God has entrusted to us, how we have been sincere, committed, uh, faithful in doing what God has given to us, you know, um, he will give us um, authority over uh, uh, to rule over nations, to govern, to administer over uh, the nations of the world in his literal uh, kingdom. Okay, and it, it, this is very interesting. Um, therefore, you know, we need to look at um, our presence stewardship as something that will um, bring about uh, rewards which will affect our future role of who we are, our authority, our position, uh, you know, uh, in the in the literal kingdom that Jesus will come to um, establish. Okay, so uh, uh, I hope this parable uh, will encourage us, will motivate us, will get us into a serious mode of uh, 
you know, uh, knowing that um, everything that God has given to us, even people, even contacts, even the opportunities that he has placed in our life, that we take it seriously, that we are good stewards of what God has given to us here right now. And, um, you know, uh, multiply it, use it, enhance his kingdom, build his kingdom, and uh, we will receive future rewards when we are in the literal kingdom that he comes to establish okay so that is the parable um in um luke chapter 19 verses 11 to 27 and uh, with that we looked at um, a few of the parables that talk about um, the kingdom of god the kingdom of heaven uh, there are more parables that we can or uh, we can study um you know so i just encourage you to um, like I said last class, you know, when you when you read these parables, just ask God to open your heart and your mind to see the mysteries, to see the truths um, regarding his kingdom, what he wants us to do. And um, that will, uh, you know, uh, open us to the revelations that he has of what he has spoken through these parables. Okay. So Rose says, Pastor, the story applies to the millennium time when Jesus will come to rule and reign. Yes, yes. Because it says he will, uh, when the nobleman, you know, comes back, he's, he's gone, he'll come back uh, after receiving for himself a kingdom and he will return. Okay, so talking about the literal kingdom, uh, the thousand year millennium rule when Jesus himself will establish the little kingdom uh, here on earth and he will rule and reign and how good stewards of what he has entrust to, entrusted to us now, how we have been good stewards, how we have done business, how we, you know, uh, we have um, uh, multiplied what he has given to us, how we have um, engaged in, a, 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 in, in this world, uh, bringing about increase and influence and impact and reaching this world uh, will, uh, you know, uh, 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 establish uh, whether we, what rewards we will get in the literal kingdom, whether we will be administrators, uh, governors, rulers of the nations of this world. Did that help, Rose? Okay. So any questions um, in chapter 7, the parables? Before we move on to chapter 8. Yes, Nina John. Um, this particular uh, parable, as uh, I mean, which is which is in Luke, right? Mm -hmm. So it says that we need to be engaging with the world mm -hmm. to be involved in trade and commerce, right? Yes. I mean, it's talking about that essentially, you know, in this uh, chapter, Luke. It's not really talk. It's talking about really being involved with what resources God has given you. Mm -hmm. to be uh, using it in the world, right? And to gain more, I mean, or, or to be profitable in that area, right? Yes. So uh, then, yeah. Uh, yes. Profitable in the sense how yes. how we are going to uh, bring about God's uh, kingdom reign, his kingdom rule, his kingdom presence, his kingdom value into the sphere of influence or the mind molders or the, you know, the seven mountains that we were talking about, you know, um, mm -hmm. and um, how we can establish his kingdom, uh, basically bringing about the kingdom mandate, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in uh, heaven. Yes. Uh, so in when we say when we get involved, then it will probably be uh, that you are initiating any particular sphere of activity, no? Because it also says that we can't really be um, yoked with other people who would not probably have the same view point. I mean, they would be uh, working in different ways that would be at cross purposes then, no? I mean, so you're saying that be in all these seven mountain areas mm -hmm. and yet be a representative of God. Is that what this is mean this means? Yes. Or because uh, uh, okay. Yes, we need to be part of this. Uh, we are in this world. He's put us in this world, and he's put us in this world 
uh, so that we can be an influence to the people of this world. So why did God, even if you look at the Old Testament pattern, why did God uh, choose uh, Israel? Not because they were greater than any other nation, not because they were good, but because he wanted uh, through them his laws, his covenants, um, uh, his uh, uh, pe people around them to experience the God that they serve, uh, the God who's called them, uh, and uh, you know, experience His laws, walk in them, you know, His covenants, and so that was the whole uh, initiative. Why He chose a particular nation, He chose the Israelites so that they can be an influence to people around. But sadly, what happened was, you know, instead of being an influence, they became like the people. Uh, around them okay so what god is looking at us as a, as a church is that he he doesn't want us just to you know uh, say okay you know we're born again go up to himalayas or some mountain and and stay there you know uh, just worship him and be pure and holy but he wants us to engage in the world means he wants us to use all of what he has given to us to enhance to build his uh, kingdom to influence his kingdom to be salt and light to uh, you know penetrate into the darkness and bring about his um, light and establish his kingdom you know just like jesus did if you see jesus also you know he went around you know the marketplaces he 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 was always with the sinners you know ministering to them and just speaking to them and uh, uh, making known the kingdom of God uh, to them. So that is what he expects of you and I. Did that help, Nina? Yes, that that is kind of clear that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what we have to be in our respective areas, no matter where we, uh, you know, uh, uh, where we work and things like that. What I really wanted to know is that like partnering in that way that we'll have to be careful isn't it i mean like when it's a business venture or any of those things whatever is involved in trade and commerce and everything so uh partnership in that way with uh people who who will not be uh, seeing uh whom we will not who will not probably work in the same way i mean so we need to be wary of that is what i was asking yeah. Yes, you mean the same values that we uphold? Yes. And the lifestyles that we uh, live? Yes. But we can, uh, even as we uphold kingdom values and kingdom lifestyle and culture, it will bring about, it is going to bring about a change in their lives. It is going to impact them because mm -hmm. we are going to be uh, different. That is what attracted people to uh, Jesus. And that is what he, uh, God had this whole this, uh, purpose of, uh, you know, fighting for uh, the Israelites, being for them, you know, uh, doing signs, miracles and wonders. So the nations will see and uh, they would uh, know the true and living God. Yeah. So what we do, we are going to be salt and light. We are going to impact other people's lives. Okay. Oh, did that That's good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else has any questions? Okay. If uh, there are no questions, then we move on to the next chapter. Uh, chapter 8, Kingdom Authority. Um, we see that, you know, um, uh, God's kingdom is uh, so important and understanding the kingdom of God uh, is so important. And we, we are learning to, you know, all that we have spoken in or studied in the last seven chapters, we're learning to live and flow and, um, and operate, uh, you know, uh, by the standards of the kingdom of God, by the kingdom of God. And, and the kingdom of God is so important because we know that Jesus himself began um, uh, his ministry by saying the kingdom of God is here. And he also concludes, uh, you know, in his final days on earth by talking about uh, the things concerning uh, the kingdom of God. We studied this in chapter one and chapter two. So it's very important uh, for all of us to understand and live by 
the principles and the teachings of Jesus on the kingdom of God. So, you know, um, uh, what we are uh, studying, what we are learning, you know, just like uh, 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 I just like y'all to, I just want to encourage y'all really to soak into the subject of the kingdom of God. You know, let this teaching just uh, sink into our hearts and our ears, and uh, not just attend it as a class or a lecture that you have to attend, but something that we need to live by. Okay, so don't just treat this as a course teaching that you have to hear. Uh, every Monday morning, but uh, this is something that you have to live by, something that you have to order your life, uh, even as we've learned about kingdom culture, kingdom lifestyle, you know, um, kingdom values, what God wants us to do, uh, you know, how he wants us to um, uh, study his word, the parables so that we can receive uh, revelations and uh, mysteries of his uh, or, or, or regarding the or concerning the kingdom of God, even as we study His uh, word, so we are part of God's kingdom, uh, each one of us, and um, all that we are studying is not something that is just a course content, but it's something that we need to, you know, let it just soak into our lives, sink into our our hearts and our minds, and uh, live it out because that is more important because we need to live out. Uh, our lives as kingdom citizens, know our kingdom mandate, know what God has called us to do um, so that um, we can, you know, be good stewards of what he has entrusted to us. We can um, do what he is looking up to us. He is he's looking up to us. Can you imagine the God of this uh, of this great big universe who created everything, this awesome great God is actually looking up to us to fulfill what is in his heart and his mind even before the foundation of the world. That means he came to establish the kingdom of God. He wants us to, you know, um, uh, uh, wants us to spread his kingdom here on earth. So this is our uh, purpose why we are living. This is... Um, the calling that we have on our lives, even though we have uh, specific uh, specific calling, but this is also a general plan and purpose that God has for our lives, that he wants us to build his kingdom, enhance his kingdom, and further his kingdom uh, here on earth. So we look at another aspect of the kingdom of God that is um, chapter 8, kingdom authority. Uh, you know, as part of the kingdom of God, God has vested his authority uh, in your life and in my life. And as believers, uh, we need to learn how to flow under uh, this authority, how to operate in kingdom authority, how to walk in kingdom authority and walk in kingdom power and uh, dominion. Now, when Jesus introduced the kingdom of God, when he, uh, you know, he began to say the kingdom of God is here, he just did not preach and teach about the kingdom of God or how the kingdom of God is. But we also saw that he, you know, he accompanied that with demonstrations of, uh, of power and authority and uh, dominion. Okay. So even as he brought about the, uh, or he spoke about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, uh, you know, the Bible says he went about healing um, sick people, casting out devils, uh, you know, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers. Uh, and we read this in uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 20 to 24. Can somebody uh, please read that? Matthew chapter 4, uh, verses 20 to 24. And... And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of disease, uh, sicknesses and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Amen. Thank you, Rin. So here we see that Jesus went about teaching uh, concerning the kingdom of God. And he not only made a proclamation about the kingdom of God, but there was also demonstrated a demonstration. He also demonstrated kingdom authority. And how did he demonstrate kingdom authority? By healing every sickness and disease and by casting out 
um, demons. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Can somebody read that, please? Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. She said, But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Amen. Thank you. So here, uh, Jesus meaning to say that, you know, here is the evidence that I'm proclaiming to you. Uh, the kingdom is here, is evidence, you know, uh, uh, how, how, what is the evidence that the kingdom of God is here? And so he's saying the evidence is, you know, by me casting out uh, demons. Uh, the evidence is here by me casting out uh, devils. And how do I cast out these demons and devils? It's I'm casting it out by the spirit of God. Uh, what Jesus is basically meaning to say is the powers of darkness are being destroyed because of the work of the Holy Spirit. And he said, this is the evidence that the kingdom of God is here. So the main evidence that Jesus is giving that the kingdom of God is here is that, you know, the powers of darkness are being destroyed through the work of the Spirit. And, uh, and you know, uh, the, the evidence is through signs, wonders and uh, miracles. And then we see that, you know, Jesus also turned around to his disciples and, uh, you know, he taught them to do the same thing. You know, uh, he in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, he says he called his disciples and he gave them power over unclean spirits um, uh, to cast them out and to heal all sickness and all um, disease. And then uh, the same chapter in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, he's, he commands them, he says, you know, go preach, um, saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. So we see that Jesus uh, not only spoke or thought uh, regarding the kingdom of God, he not only just, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, dialogued with them regarding the kingdom of God, he not only just shared stories or, or parables uh, regarding the kingdom of God, but he also did uh, signs, miracles, and wonders. And he says these signs, miracles, and wonders are evidence uh, that the kingdom of God is there in their uh, midst, that the kingdom of God has come. And, uh, you know, Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, he says, you know, if by the spirit of God I cast out devils, then the kingdom of God has come to you. So he's he's not pointing out to his teaching. He's not pointing out to his uh, uh, you know, uh, the parables that he is telling them, the stories that he is telling them. But what is he pointing out as an evidence that the kingdom of God has come is that he's pointing out uh, that the powers of darkness have been destroyed because of the work of the Holy Spirit. He says this is the evidence that the kingdom of God is here. And he's, he's showing it, uh, he's showing the evidence to signs, wonders and uh, miracles and he's asking his disciples even to do the same thing you know he calls them and he gives them power over uh, unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of sickness and uh, disease and uh, he also commands them to go and preach um, and teach that the kingdom of God is at hand and he doesn't just stop there it doesn't just say preach and teach but he also says you know heal the sick uh, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, um, and uh, he he tells his disciples uh, to do that. So, you know, uh, he's telling his disciples, I want you to go and tell the people uh, about the kingdom of uh, heaven, that the kingdom of heaven is here. Um, and what else you should do is you should accompany it by uh, signs, miracles, and uh, wonders. So he says, when you go about proclaiming the kingdom of God, you know, uh, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out uh, devils. And he says, do this as a means of proclaiming that the kingdom of God is here. You know, do this as a means of proclaiming that the kingdom of God comes with 
power, that the kingdom of God comes with a demonstration uh, of kingdom authority and kingdom dominion. So when Jesus says, uh, you know, I cast out demons by the spirit of God, and he's saying it's the, the work of the Holy Spirit, he's saying that, you know, the kingdom of God is come here in your midst and proclaiming it, and it's coming with power. It's coming with the demonstration of kingdom authority and kingdom dominion. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit um, uh, that is being manifested in and through my um, life. So, you know, he he wants people to know that the kingdom of God is uh, uh, is is also demonstration of uh, kingdom authority and kingdom power, and it is through the work of the Holy uh, Spirit. And Jesus, uh, you know, not only intended that for his disciples, but Jesus also intends that for uh, you and me. The same thing that uh, he told his disciples. Um, you know, 2,000 years back, he intends the same thing for us in our own generation and in the generations to uh, come. So look at what he told his disciples in uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Can somebody read that, please? Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Twenty-eight verse nineteen. Uh -huh. It's re it reads, uh, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and you can read the 20, verse 20 as well. And, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Amen. Uh, thank you, Prince. So here we uh, read and we see that, you know, Jesus says, telling his disciples, you know, uh, this is a great commission he's giving them. He says, go and make disciples of all nations. And then he says, I want you to teach them. Okay. I want you to teach them because you have been taught by me, you know, you have learned from me, and I want you to teach your disciples to observe everything or to observe all things that I have taught you, okay? So Jesus is saying, just like I have taught you, I want you to teach uh, uh, the disciples, and that goes on through the generations because it is the Great Commission. You know, um, so what did Jesus teach them? He teach he taught them to, uh, you know, to proclaim that the kingdom of God is here. And how did he teach them to proclaim that the kingdom of God is here? To heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, and to cast out uh, demons. Okay, or to cast out devils. So he's saying, this is what I taught you. This is what I'm asked. I taught you to do. This is what I've asked you to proclaim about the kingdom of God, and I want you to, you know, uh, teach this to the disciples. I want you to observe all things. I want you to teach all um, things. So he's saying, you know, I want you disciples to teach your disciples to do the same thing that I have done, that I have um, taught you, okay? Um, and, you know, I believe that Jesus also wants you and me to do the same thing uh, in our day, even as we uh, proclaim the kingdom of God, even as we, um, you know, preach and teach the kingdom of God, even as we bring about the kingdom of God into our circumstances, into our environments. Uh, he wants the kingdom of God to not be something that is just spoken about and taught, but also uh, a kingdom of demonstration of his kingdom authority and his uh, kingdom power. Okay. And this is what he wants you and me uh, uh, to do. So now, you know, here's the deal. You can say, uh, well, how can I do that? Okay. Um, it's okay with Jesus. He could he could do it because he's the son of God. It's okay with the apostles. It's okay with the early church. Uh, but, you know, who am I? You know, um, so who are you? You are and uh, who who are you or who am I? Is that we are a hair of God. Uh, we are joint hairs with uh, Jesus Christ. And we see that, you know, this was God's original intent. This was God's original plan that he had. Um, um, we read this in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Can somebody read that, please? Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Oh. 
Matthew chapter 25 verse 34 then the king will say to those on his right hand come you blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world amen so jesus uh, you know here he's talking about the story when he separates the uh, the sheep from the goats and he's saying you know uh, uh, he tells us that Come, you blessed, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before the foundation of the uh, world. So, you know, um, uh, we read this in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Uh, you know, when we even uh, began the series with that uh, verse, it, you know, it was God's intent to have a kingdom, you know, um, even before we we started this whole uh, study about the kingdom of God, uh, we looked at how it was God's original plan, his original intent uh, to have a kingdom. He thought about this even before, uh, you know, he created the world, even before the foundations of the world came into being, into existence. Uh, God had this intent. He had this plan. He had this uh, purpose in his heart, in his mind, where his people would inherit it, uh, is kingdom meaning that you know uh, we would be heirs of God and we would be co-heirs uh, with uh, Jesus Christ in that uh, kingdom okay so today as a child of God uh, you know uh, we read in Romans chapter 8 verses 16 and 17 it says that you know God has sent his spirit into our hearts and therefore we are heirs of God and joint heirs uh, with uh, Jesus Christ. So each one of us are a heir in his kingdom. We inherit that kingdom because we are his sons and daughters. And even as we inherit that kingdom, you know, it's not something that we just um, enjoy the privileges, enjoy the blessings, but it is also a responsibility. Uh, and because it's a responsibility, you know, he has given us the authority, his authority, uh, his life, um, his dominion, his power just flows in and through uh, our lives uh, to invade the sphere of influence that he has placed us in, to, in, to invade, uh, to influence, to impact um, the environment that he has put us in so that we can bring about his kingdom reign, his kingdom rule, and his kingdom um, presence. So, um, Today, as children of God, you know, you and I um, are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Can somebody please read uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, please? Romans 8, 16 and 17. Romans chapter 8, verse 16 and 17. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I can... Yeah, that's 16 and 17. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anand. So here we see that God has sent his spirit into our hearts and... You know, his the spirit of God in our hearts attests that we are children of God, that we are sons of God, that we are heirs of God, and that we are joint heirs um, with uh, Jesus Christ. So kingdom authority has been vested upon each one of us because we are a heir of God. Uh, the authority of God, the authority of the king of the kingdom is flowing in and through each one of us uh, as people who are inheritors of his kingdom, as, uh, as people who are are uh, children, uh, sons and daughters uh, of uh, the king of this kingdom as uh, people who are heirs uh, with God and co-heirs with uh, Jesus Christ. Now, uh, to understand this, you know, uh, uh, when we look at a policeman who is, um, you know, standing on the road, you know, when he raises his hand, uh, what happens? You know, traffic stops most of the time. You know, some people always like to um, go past that as well but you know traffic stops most of the time now if you look at it you know um, uh, 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 the, the traffic police has no inherent ability to by himself you know uh, stop a running or a moving car 
but if he just comes in the if he gets in the way he'll probably get run over it but when he stands aside and when he just raises his hand you know uh, uh, the car just stops why because you know he's uh, he's wearing his uniform uh, he is uh, he is in a place of authority that has been vested upon him uh, by the government and uh, so the the person who's driving the car has to automatically stop but if he tries to come you know uh, when the car is uh, 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 is uh, 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 you know on the road and is is moving and if he just comes in the way then you know he can be run over he can be hurt he can come under the vehicle but if he just stands at a distance and he just raises his hand and he you know he does this you know um, the traffic has to stop the car has to stop but even if the car is speeding the car will go a little ahead and you know uh, uh, will have to stop otherwise the person knows that you know he'll be fined he'll get the ticket he'll have to uh, pay a fine uh, so why does uh, the person stop the car is because they've seen this this policeman um, in his uniform and he knows they, they know that he has the authority because it has been vested upon him uh, in the same way uh, it's in in the spiritual uh, realm okay so you and I might think we are very insignificant uh, we are very small you know we don't think highly of ourselves uh, we might not be uh, having a big name we are not even a pastor or an apostle or an evangelist so to say or a missionary we're just an ordinary believer uh, a born again believer who loves the lord um, but you know we need to know that uh, whoever we are uh, if we have uh, accepted jesus christ as our lord and savior you know, uh, uh, if we are born again, uh, we are part of the kingdom of God. We are uh, sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. We are heirs with God and co-heirs with Christ Jesus. And irrespective of, uh, you know, our titles, our positions, uh, where we are in life, you know, whether we have a big name or not, whether we have a standing, an influence, whatever, we need to know that there is kingdom authority that is vested in our lives, in each one of our lives. Each one of us are uh, vested with kingdom authority because we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus um, uh, Christ. Okay, so, um, uh, you know, it's time for us to, you know, be like this policeman to raise up our hand, to use the authority with humility uh, that God has given to us. Um, uh, or we can choose to be like the policeman, you know, uh, at the traffic signal, just seeing people violating the traffic laws, uh, the traffic rules. And, you know, he doesn't do anything about it. He just stands there. He just looks, you know, he just says, okay, you do what you want. I'm not bothered. You know, I'm just paid for... Uh, uh, I just want to get my uh, pay slip or my paycheck and uh, so I'm just going to be standing here because they posted me here and I'm, I'm tired and I just don't want to uh, do anything with the traffic you all do what you want you know so we can choose to be a policeman like that you know who is seeing the traffic uh, rules being violated the traffic laws being violated and we can just turn to the other side and pretend you know nothing happened uh, you know, um, or we can be the policeman who sees uh, that there has been a violation. We raise up our hand, we stop, um, we bring about uh, justice, we bring about uh, enforcement of the rules, and uh, we teach uh, people what needs to be done and how they need to practice this, those rules. So, you know, you need, you will, each one of us has to decide what kind of uh, a policeman that we want to be, whether we want to use the kingdom authority that has been vested upon our lives or just pretend that, uh, you know, let people do what they want, live how they want, you know, as far as I'm going to heaven, as I, as far as I'm going to see the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm going to live in eternity with him, what does it matter for me what other people are uh, doing well that is um, a sad approach to take a, si a sad mindset to have but you know we need to be those kind of policemen who uh, say you know say excuse me there has been a violation you know and um, I'm going to use my authority that has been vested to ensure that uh, you know the rules are being um, followed uh, 
if you look at our church today, you know, sadly, uh, we see that there are, uh, you know, many of them who are born again, uh, they're heirs of God, uh, though they are part of the kingdom of God, you know, they just prefer to be like the policemen who prefer to turn aside, turn away, pretend there has been no violation and they go on. Um, and we need to change that, you know, we need to be a church, we need to be a generation that says, you know what, you know, we are part of the kingdom of God. Um, I know that the Almighty God has made me an heir, and there is kingdom authority that's flowing through my life, and it's time that I raise up my hand and I stop what the devil is doing. You know, I stop the work of the deeds of the evil one. I nullify it. I cancel it because he's already rendered as somebody who is defeated. He's a defeated foe. He has no power. He has no authority because all power and authority has been stripped of him. And I am going to uh, stop him. I'm going to stop the devil because uh, we looked at in chapter one that, you know, um, uh, the church has to advance against the gates of hell it's not the gates of hell that comes against the church but it's the it's the church that advance against that uh, against the gates of hell that means it's the church that goes against or goes behind the forces of darkness um, the dark places and it's uh, it, it bringing light it's bringing god's kingdom rule kingdom activity kingdom presence in those uh, places so it is we who need to advance we just can't say okay our church is doing well there is peace there's unity there's oneness uh, hallelujah everything is fine uh, you know we just go and worship and come back no it's it's uh, there is darkness there is forces of darkness that is working in um, uh, the, the, the in the workplace um, uh, in our families in our localities in our city in our nation we need to know what it is and as a church we need to advance we need to raise up our hands and stop uh, what the devil is uh, doing because he's on a rampage he's allowed to steal kill and destroy and we can't say that hey it's not with me it's not with my family we are safe but we need to advance against the uh, the gates of hell and we need to stop um, what the devil is doing and we need to uh, come against him because we have been given kingdom um, authority okay now why did god vest that authority in, in our lives why did god give us kingdom authority a uh, kingdom power and kingdom dominion so that you know you and i can bring his kingdom here into this uh, world you know God uh, will never do that for us. We've got to do it. Uh, he has entrusted that to us. He has called us and he has given us this responsibility. You know, he will never do that for us. It's what we need to uh, do. So the reason why you and I have authority is, uh, you know, because, uh, because of our position. You know, it's a positional authority, who we are in uh, Christ, as we read in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 4 to 6. Can somebody read that, please? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we are dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Okay, thank you. So it says that God has raised us up together with Christ and he has made us uh, to sit together um, at his right hand in heavenly uh, places okay so this is actually our uh you know uh, this the our spiritual identification who we are uh in christ and paul talks about this in uh, romans chapter 6 he says that you know we spiritually uh are baptized as you know uh our spiritual uh, the spiritual truth our spiritual identification is that we are uh you know uh dead buried resurrected um, you know, um, ascended and seated at the right hand of uh, God. This is our spirit. This is the spiritual truth. This is our spiritual identification. 
uh, that we have. And uh, as a result of us being, you know, um, seated at the right hand of God, which is our uh, spiritual identification, we identify this spiritually, not just you know, not physically, but the spiritual identification. He's saying that, you know, we are uh, seated at the right hand of God in heavenly uh, places. So as a believer, we are seated in a position of higher authority that is at the right hand of uh, the Father. And this is, you know, the highest place of authority. There, this, there cannot be another better place or another better seat or a position that you and I can be given rather than the right hand of God. And that is where we are. This is our, um, our spiritual identification, the spiritual truth who we are in Christ, that we are seated at the right hand of um, uh, God. And, ev and what does that mean? It means that even as we're seated at the right hand of God, everything is under our feet okay uh, we'll stop here it's uh, time for our break and uh, we'll come back and continue with this after the break thank you everyone i'll see you after the break